Welcome to all the manufacturing engineers out there that are trying to get prepared for an interview. You know, in your profession, it really has a lot of broad things that you could end up doing. I'm sure you know it by now. And you've even a, a manufacturing engineer can go by different titles like process engineer, sometimes plant engineer, sometimes you get involved with continuous improvement, lean, all these things get put into your title. But the bottom line of being a manufacturing engineer is about trying to help the company make things more efficiently and have the quality be where it needs to be. And of course, all that helps to have the company get the product out the door so that their customer can be happy because they got their product received on time. So let's talk about how you can interview more effectively for a position such as manufacturing engineer. First of all, uh, preparation is important. Uh, I think it's really important that you take a look at the company website and learn some of the things that they make. Um, even though your skill set and your education, uh, if you have your four-year degree in you know, like in bachelor's in mechanical engineering or you have BSMET, or even if you have an electronics technology degree, it's, it's all related to making certain products and out of out and they're made of different materials most of the time so in your career you want to take a look at what you've worked with from some, a broader perspective and see how it applies to the job that you're interviewing for so if you're interviewing for something in assembly and you've had assembly background then you want to be prepared to talk about your assembly record a little bit more than say the things that might not be related to that. And in the course of your career you might have worked with machining processes and metal removal, etc. You might have worked with plastics, you might have worked with chemical processes perhaps. And all those things you need to be ready for uh, potentially for different job interviews. But really when it comes down to it, what you want to do is prepare for each interview you get face to face in a very dedicated, very concise way. So that way you can talk about the things that you have done that are related to the things that they probably do based on your research. Um, a lot of people start out interviews and, and I actually attribute it to a certain a degree to the idea that uh, sometimes people are busy and they don't get a chance to really think through what they want to talk about or plan what they want to talk about. So they'll talk about, they'll start out a lot of interviews by saying, tell me about yourself. Tell me what you've done most recently, etc." And that's, that's a very generic start and it's, and it happens all the time. Um, and what you want to do with that is talk about the things that your research indicated that that company does that you have worked with. So if they've worked with machining then you want, and you've worked with machining, you want to talk about machining a little bit more. If, you're, if they're working with plastics, molding, etc., and you've worked with plastics and molding, etc., then that's a good thing. Now, uh, quite frankly, when you're changing jobs, even though your education and your experience is, is varied so that you could do different things, uh, people still love to know that you've done something related to what they do have done. Because they're looking for someone, ideally, that could come in and have an immediate impact. So any question that they ask, for example, tell me what you've done or tell me about yourself. Um, you want to start out with uh, answering questions that are uh, the question in a way that's related to what they work with, what that company makes. And, and then I think one of the things that you want to do, though, is start to ask some questions of your own. You know, a great question to ask right out of the gate after you've given them a bit of a summary answer is, well, what do you guys make and how could I help the most? You know, if you don't already know, if, uh, that if you know, then that's great. You know, you can say, well, I know you make such and such. But I'd love to really know what do you need done and how can I help most? The idea here is to get them talking about what they're looking for. Get them to talk about 
what they need done and what would help them the most coming in the door. So if they start to answer that question, you have one, two options now to go with to the answer to that question. You could provide more information how you've done some of the things or some, something similar that they brought up. Or you could say, so if I were the person chosen for the position, in the first 30 days, what were the things that I could do that would really help the most? And um, that is a great thing for you to talk about as well. So if you could get them to talk more specifically about what, they, what they're looking for, what they need done, uh, and, and then to ex bring out and expose your experience about something related to that. Okay, you don't have to be a direct hit, just simply close. In other words, if they make fasteners, you don't have to make fasteners, but fasteners are made out of a, a, a bunch of production processes that are used in a lot of different ways for a lot of different things. And if you've worked with similar procedures and processes, that's something you really want to talk about. Now, in a process engineering position, all right, uh, one of the things that always comes up is uh, talking about eliminating waste, you know, making sure that things that are, raw materials aren't wasted. And if, uh, if, if you see that that might apply, and, and again, um, a great way to talk or ask questions is to find out the problems that they're having. So if you were to ask them if they had some problems with excessive waste, which at times almost every company does, uh, then, and you have had success in eliminating that problem before, then you're setting yourself up really nicely if you were to ask them the question if they've had problems with waste, then you could pull right out of your back pocket a, a discussion or, or you know, an answer to the question or just a story about how you have helped to eliminate that kind of a problem in the, in the manufacturing process. Now, one of the cool things about being a process engineer is if you're really good at all facets of being a process engineer, you can almost make yourself recession-proof. And what I mean by that is, is a lot of positions in, 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 in any industry are vulnerable when business slows down, okay? But a manufacturing engineer or a process engineer, you can help find ways to make things more cost effective. If you could lower the company's costs, then in a sense, gives them two options that will help them be more competitive. One is they could lower their price because they're making their product a little cheaper, or they have a little bit more profit so that they can actually hold on to the, the, their staff a little longer until they can get some more sales in, okay? Because they've got a little bit more margin. In that sense, a manufacturing engineer can provide an immense value to a company. And so if you have gifts or talents or things that you've done that will help reduce costs or make things more efficient so to help reduce costs, definitely want to bring those things. Now, one of the th ways that companies look nowadays to reduce costs is to get involved with more automation, streamlining the plant. And uh, almost uh, half the manufacturing engineers in the world at some point in time get involved with lay changing the layout of the plant, maybe adding a conveyor, maybe adding a pick, up, pick in place or, uh, or even some robotic automation to a, a process. And uh, if you have any experience with that, um, it's always good to make sure that people know about that. But the key is, talk about the things that you know they need. If you could get them to talk about what they need, or ask a question about something that you're good at and see if they raise it as an issue or a concern, then that gives you the opportunity to actually talk about something that will put, set you apart from other people that might be interviewing for that position. So, as a manufacturing engineer, you're in, in a really good position to help protect your own job and to protect the jobs of other people in the company by finding ways to save money. And in a lot of ways, a manufacturing engineer should usually every year save as 
more than double what they what they make. And, you know, in other words, it, it's it's the way to get good bonuses. It's, if the company has bonuses, it's a way to really provide value. And um, so you want to be the the person that's showing that you're thinking these things through, and that you are going to be looking for ways to make their processes more smooth and more efficient. So. In, in, in closing on, on, on all of these issues, uh, it's, it's never wise to play hard to get, quite frankly. Uh, people want somebody that wants to be with their company, even if they're not, they know they're not perfect, you know you're not perfect. However, uh, saying something like, uh, well, I have two or three other options to know, you do, you know, there's starting to press for more money when you don't know where you're at in the process. And, um, I do want to say that it's far more effective as you work towards maybe getting a better offer to wait until you know you're the one that they want before you start talking money. The reason for that is once they've decided that you're the one, that's when they make that mental transference from their budget to actually making sure they get you. If you've demonstrated that you could bring a value that you can help them control costs, help them control waste, help them make things more efficiently, maybe make their product even more a higher quality. Those things will make you of higher value and, and those things will help you get a better offer, all right? So what you wanna do is, is, if you can at all possible, wait until after you know that you're the one that they want. So that might be in the second interview, might not be in the first interview, all right? Be patient. Now. Uh, I, I, f I find that a lot of companies will put somebody on the spot early in an interview about what they're looking for money-wise. Quite frankly, the, the, I mean, there's never any absolutes in anything in life, but, uh, but quite frankly, a company that wants to talk about money early to establish where you're at probably is a little worried that they don't pay that well, okay? And they want to just see if it's whether it's worth continuing the interview process or not. And uh, so if you get that kind of question early on, you really kind of want to not get yourself ruled out before you have a chance to establish your value. In other words, as you go along and you start to go through the whole interview and you start to show that you can really help them, then you'll, you, almost everyone's parameters as to what they're willing to pay adjust because they still need all those things that they're hoping for, no matter what. And that's what will actually help them with their bottom line as a company. So what you want to do is, with that, that question when it comes early, is to say to them, you know, I'm open. I'm sure you'd be fair with me, but I'm really excited about what you guys do. And so if I were the, uh, to be involved with your organization and if I was help, with helping with reducing costs and such, uh, what ways, uh, what other ways could I help to really have an impact on, on helping with your, your company's growth? Uh, and um, get them talking about those kinds of things, all right? Uh, if they bring up come back to you uh, on it, then you just say, really, I I'm open, I'm sure you'd be fair with me. And, uh, and if they really want to push it a second time uh, or a third time, if you can't get off the subject, then say, well, what, what range do you want to be in? In other words, first person that speaks loses. If you get them to say their number first, you're better off. And at that point, I still would go through with the interview because number one, in the end, you probably will meet somebody a little higher up in the process before they make a decision. You know, in a second interview, you might meet a VP or a director level person that might have more influence. And if you're really, really providing a value and you've got a chance to show your pure value or your highest value to them, then that person, if you could get to that person and that's and that person seems to be interested in you, that's really who might actually come up with that extra five or ten thousand dollars that you would really like to have. The other thing that you really want to diagnose is what is your real future there, all right? Um, uh, a, a great question to ask because it and it doesn't hinder you at all. Is if I were the if I were here for a few years and I was doing a good job, how could I grow within this organization? 
and, and make sure that if you don't necessarily mean management, you say it doesn't have to be all management, it's just what ways could I grow, all right? If you do want to get into managing people down the road, then make sure that they, they're aware of that. And um, because companies usually want to hire people that will grow with them. If they don't, then they're really short-sighted. So you really actually should talk a little bit about it for your own sake and for their sake. So they know that you're a person that has, is motivated. Uh, if you uh, act like you're only, you know, you're gonna go to them and, and, and work for them and work in the same job for 30 years and never get promoted, that's, that's actually, you, you could accidentally have them be think negative things of you because you're not showing any, any degree of desire to, to grow uh, within your profession. So there's so many things to talk about when it comes to interviewing, uh, and we're just trying to help. So as a manufacturing engineer, you want to really be ready to talk about a lot of the things you've done, but you really, really want to make sure you've done some research as to what the company makes, how it's made, what it's made out of, and anything that you've done that is related to those kinds of things, you want to be prepared to emphasize those things during the actual interview. So, going forward, I just want to have you uh, do as best as you can. Uh, if you uh, need some help with your resume, we've got some great videos on how to help you get a better response. And uh, it, you know, the Prosperity for America Channel, what we're really hoping for is that we could help everyone to find their prosperity. So have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Have a nice night. Looking for a technical professional or operations management position? Visit prosperity.jobs. For tips on how to get a better response to your resume online or how to interview more effectively to have a more prosperous career, visit the Prosperity for America channel on YouTube. Prosperity, it's what we all want.